uh, real quick. Um, the giveaway this month. First off, congratulations to Randy, uh, winner of the T-shirt, the PacWest Bigfoot T-shirt. And don't forget, guys, uh, my PacWestBigfoot.com is now open, and I'm actually I've got some great new designs on there for you, uh, and I got some more coming as well. Also, wanted to give a shout out to Tara. Uh, thank you very much, Tara, or Tara, however you pronounce it, I think it's Tara, um, for uh, you are the uh, winner of A Young Researcher's Guide to Bigfoot by Gail Beatty and Deborah Ray. And I wanted to say uh, just a shout out to Gail and Deborah for all your research, <clears throat> all the pictures and everything that you guys do and put out there, plus this awesome book and donating it in here as a, a giveaway here. I want to say God bless you guys. God bless you too. And thank you guys so very much. So let's get on with this week's encounter story. So let me get mm, comfortable here in the old leather chair. And uh, <clears throat> this week's uh, encounter story is truck driver chases Bigfoot into the forest and gets the scare of his life. I can give I can't give you my name because if I did and my company knew what I did I'd be fired immediately but I have to at least share my experience the evening I saw a Bigfoot cross the road near Wooster Road on the Spirit Lake Highway in Washington this actually happened in the early spring of 2010 and not only did I get out and chase this thing down it actually turned on me while I hold, hold no ill will to Bigfoot, they are a wild animal, and if you come across one, don't follow it. Just be thankful you had a chance to see one and go about your life. Here's what happened, Dave. Truck driver chases Bigfoot. There is nothing more stupid than risking your life for something like I did that day, even if it was to possibly prove to the world what some of us already know, that Bigfoot exists. I feel if I was not armed at the time, well, I might not be here, and the proof of the existence of Bigfoot might have come from a dead human body, and not that of this animal. And just so you know, I did not shoot at it, did not want to hit it. I couldn't, and you'll learn why here. As a matter of fact, to be honest, it had some human-like attributes. That's why. I'm the father of two awesome kids, both under the age of five, and the husband of, two, of an awesome woman of whom I am married I married right out of high school 10 years ago this year. We both went to college together, a local community college and lived near to where this incident took place. It was a dumb thing looking back to risk my life and a future of my family. That is something that will never happen again. Period. However, I will and am currently continue my own research for this thing in the area I first encountered it and if I see it again well I'll keep my distance this time currently I am a truck driver not a long hauler but a more local truck driver for a company that hauls building material this building material how, uh, however is usually prefabricated building material for homes log homes after it is hauled then I also help to build the homes or structures that is about as far as I'm going with that. Recently the company got a huge bid of approved um, at the time for one of the largest log homes they ever built to date. To that date, uh, This was going to be huge for them and of course a big paycheck for me. The haul would take several trips this time, actually more than several. It was the fourth and close to last trip I would make before I would help uh, with the construction uh, part of the job when I had watched as a Bigfoot crossed right in front of me, stop on the side of the road and stare at me in the side rearview mirror of my truck. It was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen, other than my children being born of course, and the most frightening experience as well, but I created that part of the situation however. dude. What are you doing? As I stated, I was on the fourth trip when I came across someone almost bobbing and weaving behind some trees on the side of the road and then darted across the road not far in front of me along Spirit Highway. To give you some context, this part of the road was pretty much a straightaway as I was traveling I was traveling down at the time. But I was running a pretty heavy load, so so slow going was a must. 
Uh, I was just under the weight limit and load size to require a pilot vehicle. But like I said, slow going, real slow going was the call for that day. Fortunately, in a way, I guess, that would lend to a better look at the creature as it passed in front of me. All I had to do that late afternoon was to take the load to the location, drop everything off, and then retrieve the trailer uh, tomorrow after every uh, the next day uh, after everything was unloaded off of it. I was coming up near Wooster Road along the Spirit Lake Highway when I noticed a tall, dark figure off to the right side of the road. It seemed to be bobbing in and out from behind a clump of trees, some pine trees. I don't know the names of the others. It was tall and dark, but I could tell it was on two legs, even from where I was as I approached it. I slowed down even more, thinking I had some whack job in the middle of almost nowhere, thinking he might want to play chicken or something. And then, I was actually a little shocked when all of a sudden they did. They literally took off from the right side of the road to the other side, just as I was almost on them. And that is when I noticed it was not a person at all. Bigfoot. And that was all that crossed my mind. I just watched as a nearly nine-foot beast of a thing took literally less than four steps from one side of a highway to the other. And now it stood there, looking at me as I passed by what we call Parade Slow. I knew I shouldn't, but I did. I decided to pull over and get out. Besides that, Thing was still standing there, just looking down the road towards me as I slowed down. It took a few seconds or so to pull over and jump out, but I did and looked back to where that thing was standing seconds before. And just so you know, it was head and shoulders above the hood of my semi-truck when I passed. By, that is how I figured my measurement to be pretty close at least. Catch me if you can. It was gone. But because it was late in the afternoon, actually early evening, with little wind to block the noise, there was no traffic either, so I could hear that thing walking not too far ahead. I grabbed my small handgun, handgun and crossed the road at an angle thinking I could, maybe, possibly get in front of it. Washington State is known for its forests, of course, like Oregon, Northern California, and British Columbia. It was thick with low-lying brush and pine trees everywhere. But I could hear it walking, and it seemed to be no more than 40 to 50 feet away at the time. And at one point, I swear I could see a large shadow off to the left, walking at an angle that would, eventually, well, end up cutting me off instead. At that point, the both of us must have been about 45 yards or so off the road, and we were both on a collision course, it seemed as well. Like I said, I am not sure this was the smartest move I ever made, and I should have just had a road sighting like many other people have and left it at that. But at that moment, well, I was actually excited in a good way. Adrenaline at an all-time high for me, I could see this thing moving towards me at an angle. Then suddenly it stopped. It too saw me and just stood there, motionless. As agile and as quick as these things supposedly are, I am not sure this thing, this Bigfoot, either heard me or just did not notice me at first. But it did now either way, and it was not looking as though it was happy I was there. First off, I got a great look at this thing. That is why I am so passionate about the subject today. It was at least nine feet tall for sure. Its hair was dark except for the gray along the forehead and brow that I did not notice before. And the face, it was ape-like, I guess, but it was creepy and old-looking. I guess you could say because of the nose, <clears throat> it carried a human-like quality to it. The reason I could not shoot it. When it, briefly turned to look, uh, when it briefly turned to look behind it, it used its whole upper body to turn as there was no real neck. And that is when I noticed a gray streak down its back. It turned back, looked at me with glaring eyes and what seemed to be a frown. <clears throat> it was truly a menacing look. Scary, frightening even. 
At that moment I knew I had made the dumbest decision of my life, and possibly the last I would ever make. I suddenly felt real fear come over me. This thing then started growling, and I could plainly hear it as if it was standing right next to me. It stood there on two legs, enormous, with arms the size of two small logs, I swear. It took three steps forward, and when it stopped it literally froze for what seemed a minute, with its right hand now on a tree next to it. Old Gray Monkey Man The human like likeness was uh, in the fact it walked like us, and had arms, legs, and even a face that seemed to show emotion. However, it seemed more like mighty Joe Young than me, to be sure. It was old, too. You could just tell by the weather-worn face and eyes. You could just see that this particular Bigfoot was up in age, and not afraid of me, or people in general, either. It was slightly hunched from the waist up. I thought maybe because of the massive upper body sitting on the smaller frame of a waist. However, listening uh, at other descriptions over the last few years or so, I think this one was probably pretty skinny compared to most creatures in the encounter stories I have heard thus far. It was getting darker, and I was getting more and more scared as it stood there, almost glaring at me. It swayed a bit, and that, I believed, has simply become a part of factual behavior of these things from what I understand when they are either curious or nervous themselves. It was about 10 to 20 seconds after watching this thing stare at me when it started pushing on the tree and growling under its breath. It was a crazy growl, too. It was deep, and the vibration seemed to be a part of that infrasound that experts talk about often today. I could not feel it, however, but you could not mistake a growl like that for anything other than, I am not happy you were here. The tree kept shaking and eventually started swaying back and forth. This was no slim toothpick either. This was at least 8 to 10 inches in diameter. It took this animal only seconds to have this thing falling and in my direction. The tree came completely out of the ground and falling about 20 feet to the right of my current position and about 10 feet shy in reach. I moved, of course, as a matter of fact, flight was the number one thing on my mind all of a sudden. I reached for my gun, which I knew because of the massive size of this thing that it would do me no good except for maybe scaring this thing a little or get its attention long enough to get away. It started growling again and even moved a bit towards me with that weird walk it had. I fired a shot in the air. It stopped, stood there, and looked as though it was now really irritated, even mad. However, it grunted right at me, <clears throat> turned, and walked off rather quickly into the forest and out of sight. The dumbest thing I ever did. I could have lost my life that day, and all because I wanted to get something for myself in the end. did not think of my family at first, but I did when the thing started growling. Today I do some research with some friends in the general area. As a matter of fact, the area I had this encounter in is private, and the owners gave us permission to access parts of it without the need to notify them. But I do anyways. And just so you know, Dave, they gave me access for a reason to prove they were not going crazy. They too have had a visual and hear things from time to time, day and night, around the area. But that is my encounter story. To tell you the truth, I may do research, but I would never put myself in such a dangerous position again. I love my family far too much. Thanks. <laughs>